So here is final exam review number three. By the way, I think on your copy there's a typo. I think yours is called final exam review number two. But it's number three, begins with a logarithmic equation. So one of the questions I feel totally fair game to ask you, under the log section on your final is a logarithmic equation. I've already mentioned it's going to be one of three different equations. It's going to be a word problem, like a half-life exponential growth word problem. Uh, it's going to be an exponential equation, like 5 to the x equals 3 to the 2 minus 6x. Where is the variable? It's in the exponent. Take the log of both sides, something like that. Or it may be a logarithmic equation like this. Now, our strategy for a logarithmic equation was to try and to write it as one thing equals one thing. Here I have logs of the same base. I'm subtracting. I can combine them as a log. Subtracting two logs is the same as dividing. This is the same as the log base 3 of x minus 3 over x plus 2. That equals the log base 3 of 4. I now have one log equals one log, and so the logs cancel. Well, they don't really. Technically, I'm taking the anti-log of both sides. Ah, forget it. They cancel. The next equation, or what I'm really solving, is this. x minus 3 all over x plus 2 equals 4. Now what? Yeah, cross multiply. x, oh, let's change colors, Mr. Duke. x minus 3 equals 4 bracket x plus 2 x minus 3 equals 4x plus 8 minus 8 from both sides. You'll get negative 11 minus x from both sides. You'll get 2x and you get x equals negative 11 over 2. Oh, I gotta go back and check for extraneous roots, however, because I can't take the log of a negative. I made this question up not a great question. Turns out this question here has no solution because if I put a negative right there, I'll get a negative minus another negative, which is a negative number. I can't take the log of a negative. So in fact, no one gets a date, sadly. It's nothing but rejection. Am I going to give you one like that on the test? Oh, maybe. Other possibilities, you could have gotten a quadratic equation here, had two solutions, maybe one of them might have got rejected. So look at your notes for those. There's absolutely going to be a quadratic trig equation. So what kind of an equation is this? It's a quadratic. How do I know? It's got a squared. How do I solve that? Well, first I've got to make it equal to zero. So I'm going to get 2 cos squared theta plus 7 cos theta minus 4 equals 0. I need to factor this. Now I'm going to factor this as though it was 2a squared plus 7a minus 4 equals 0, except instead of an a I have a cosine there. How do I factor these? Well I always look for a greatest common factor first. There isn't one, but it would be nice if there was. This is going to factor as a trinomial. It's got a leading coefficient. These are the yucky ones. To factor this, I'm going to look for two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to positive 7. The negative 8 comes from those two. The positive 7 comes from the middle one. What are two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to positive 7? Uh, I think positive 8 and negative 1. This is going to factor into 2a squared plus 8a minus 1a minus 4. This is called the decomposition method where I drop this and this term down and I decompose the 7a into the two numbers uh, 8a minus 1a which is still 7a. Then what I do is in my head I draw an imaginary line right down the middle. I greatest common factor the first two terms. I factor out oh change colors Mr. Do. I factor out a 2a leaving me with a plus 4. I fra want uh, to factor out a common factor. Now there isn't one. Well there is. 1 and negative 1 are always common factors. Which one do I want to factor out? Well I want the brackets to be identical. If I factor out a negative 1 that's going to give me a positive a and a plus 4 which means the factors are identical. The final roots of this are 2a minus 1 
a plus 4, the final factors of this. That means this is going to factor into 2 cos theta minus 1 cos theta plus 4 equals 0. What are the roots? Well, cosine of theta could be negative 4. Hey, wait a minute. The smallest cosine gets is negative 1. The biggest it gets is positive 1. Cosine has a range between negative 1 and positive 1, which means this one here is going to have no solution. If it was tangent, the ugly cousin, well then yeah. Here, I'm going to get cosine theta equals 1 half. I can now use the cast rule. Cosine is positive, which means I'm here and here. Oh, and I even have a triangle with a 1 and a 2 in it, so I can do this as an exact value question. This belongs to the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Which of these angles has a cosine of 1 half? This one up here. How big is that one up there? Why, it's pi by 3, which means that angle is pi by 3, and that angle is pi by 3, which really means that my first theta value is pi by 3. My second theta is, oh, 2 pi minus pi by 3, or 6 pi by 3 minus 1 pi by 3. It's 5 pi by 3. You may, when you get the quadratic trig, end up with actually multiple roots. This might not necessarily be a no solution. It might be for purposes of time. Maybe not. It may be an exact value like this. I may give you one that doesn't factor into a special triangle, but still factors into solutions, in which case you would find the reference angles by going second function sine or second function cos or second function tangent. Uh, example two. Solve this one. Another quadratic trig. Uh, this one factors with GCF, so when I factor out a sine x, I'm left with 2 sine x plus root 3, and that all equals 0, which means my roots are sine x equals 0 and sine x equals negative root 3 over 2. Here, wah, alarm bell, uh, this is going to be unit circle, or I could sketch the function. Where is sine 0? So sine is 0 when the y coordinate is 0, because sine is y over r, but on the unit circle, r is 1, so sine is just plain old the y coordinate. When am I 0 high? Right there and right there. What angles are those? Now, if it had said or equal to 2 pi, there'd be a third x, 2 pi. I said I hate the fact that the textbook does that. I think you go around once. You don't go around once, the, uh, the circle once, and then a tiny bit. Here, uh, hey, this is also a special triangle. Cool. This is the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Which of these angles has a sine? Oh, first of all, I should do the cast rule. Sine is negative. The fact that sine is negative tells me I'm here and here. Which of these has a cosine, uh, sorry, a sine of root 3 over 2, of opposite over hypotenuse? You know what? That one does. Again, it's pi by 3. Oh, every answer has a reference angle of pi by 3. No, that's a fluke. Don't try and spot a pattern that's not there. That means this angle and this angle are both pi by 3. That means my third x value is that big which I believe is 4 pi by 3, 3 pi by 3 plus 1, and my fourth x value is that big, which is 5 pi by 3, 6 pi by 3, minus 1 pi by 3. Lastly, I guarantee there's going to be an identity on your test, so here is an identity. How would I handle this one? Well, start with the ugly side. They're both ugly, although this one has... Uh, denominator, that's a binomial, which is yuck here. I have a feeling I'll spend a bit more time on here. Rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. Okay. Uh, secant is 1 over cosine. And now that I have one fraction, I want everything to be a fraction. Secant is 1 over cosine. 
and since I have one fraction, I want everything to be a fraction. Now what? Well, these are both complex fractions. By the way, another way to go about this, I know that sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. I might have been able to work some magic here. I might not. I don't know. But I'm going to use a systematic approach here. This is a complex fraction. So what we're going to do is we're going to, on this side, multiply the top and the bottom by the common denominator, which is cosine. I'm going to multiply by cosine over cosine, although I put everything over 1, so I would have a 4-level fraction times a 4-level fraction. When I do that, here, I have a cos on top, a cos on the bottom. They're going to cancel. I'm going to be left with 1 over here. Can you see that nothing is going to cancel and everything is over 1? Trust me, just leave it like 1 minus cos times cos. You could multiply it in, but I guarantee on the next line you'd factor out the cosine greatest common factor. Leave it like that. Uh, here on the right side, I'm going to do the same thing. I have a complex fraction, so I'm going to multiply by my common denominator, which again happens to be cos over 1 over cos over 1. When I do that on the top, in the first fraction, a cos is going to cancel. I'll get 1 plus. In the second fraction, there's a 1 on the bottom here and here, so it's just going to be top times top, bottom times bottom. 1 plus cos all over sine squared cos. Yeah. No. Oh. Can I cancel? Is it factored? Then don't you dare cancel. Now what? Well, I notice here I have a binomial denominator with no squares. I might try as a last resort the conjugate. What would the conjugate of this be? 1 plus cos, and I'd multiply that to the top. Ooh, what's on the top over on this side? 1 plus cos. Hey, that's a great idea. Let's actually try the conjugate. Let's go times 1 plus cos over 1 plus cos. When I do that on the top, I get 1 plus cos x, which is great. On the bottom, I notice over here I have a cos. Here's a cos. I wonder if these two will combine into a sine squared. Oh, they do! Look, 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 look! Temporarily move the cos x to the front and just multiply this times this. Foil these guys out. I'll get a 1. I'll get a plus cos x. I'll get a minus cos x. Extend my fraction line. And I'll get a minus cos squared x. I can't help noticing that those cancel, and I'm left with 1 minus cos squared. And what is 1 minus cos squared? <gasps> Why, that is sine squared. On the top, I get 1 plus cos x. On the bottom, I have a cos x sitting in the front, and I have a 1 minus sine squared, which is just, sorry, 1 minus cos squared, which is just plain old. Are those the same? Yes, they are. That's actually a tough identity. I stole that from the bottom half of that hints from identity sheet, which has some real nasties on it. But that's a good review of most of the skills that we used in solving trig identities. So there it is, review number three.